everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Jordan, I post every Monday and Friday and I post basically any type of video under the sun, vlogs, lifestyle, fashion, and skating related content and it would mean the world to me if you subscribed and joined the fam. I'm also trying to reach 10,000 subscribers by September so if you could help me reach that goal it would mean so so much to me and I would really appreciate it. But anyways, today's video is a really exciting one. I get asked all the time how I create my Instagram feed and how I maintain an aesthetic, if you will. So I thought that I would just sit down and talk to you guys about how to up your Insta game. I also got a lot of great feedback on my other Instagram related videos on my channel. So I thought I would just whip up another one for you and get your Insta feed looking fire. So. As per usual, I have my little notebook with all my notes that I have jotted down for this video and we're just going to be going down the line. Speaking of Instagram, if you guys want to follow me on Instagram or my other social media platforms, I will have them down in the description as always and let's hop into it. First things first, we have to start with the basics, so whether you already have a feed going on and you want to change it or you're starting from scratch, the first thing you need to do is you need to figure out your aesthetic if you will there's a lot of different ways you can go about this you could go bright you could go dark you could go really colorful or very neutral it is all up to you and what you want to make your Instagram I absolutely love the fashion Instagrams where it's literally just outfits I think it looks so good for me personally I like to use my Instagram as a highlight of my life and just kind of showcase my real life so I'm not all too picky when it comes to content creation what I post versus what I don't post but I do have a lot of fun picking filters and presets and editing the colors so here's just my feed uh, as you can see I prefer just like a brighter feed with a lot of color um, and I don't like my pictures to be too over edited uh, I like a lot of color but not too oversaturated so yeah so next once you figure out your aesthetic the next thing you want to do is figure out your outfits as far as your feed goes so you don't want to be wearing like the same exact article of clothing in all your pictures because it doesn't really give much variety it's okay to be an alpha repeater i will say that but the more creative you get with your outfits the better your feed will look overall and you also want to think about colors, so depending on what kind of feed you want, you should wear colors that coincide with that. So if, for example, if you wanted a feed that's very neutral toned and earthy, I would recommend wearing white, camel, tan, brown, like an olive green, burnt orange, things like that. In the long run, it'll be a lot easier for you when it comes down to editing if you wear colors that kind of coincide with the feed you're trying to create. Once you've got all that sorted out, then you're going to want to get inspiration. So my absolute favorite place to get inspiration for photos and for your Instagram feed is Pinterest. Um, another really great place is the explore page on Instagram actually. So if you're on Instagram and you just scroll and you find a picture you like, maybe it's a pose or an outfit, I will just save it so that I can look back on it later. Same goes for Pinterest, I actually have a fashion board, so if I find like a pose or an outfit I want to recreate, I will just save it to that board and I can look back on it at any given moment. This is really helpful too if you have a specific like pose in mind when you're actually out taking the photos, you can just look back at your phone really quick and help you figure out the angles of the camera and all that jazz. Now let's talk about equipment. So for me personally, I don't think equipment is the most important thing. Of course, if you're using a camera or an iPod touch from 15 years ago, it's not gonna turn out great, but your normal iPhone should work just as fine as a camera. Most of the pictures on my feed were taken with my phone. Um, I have the iPhone XR, but I do have a couple pictures that I took with my Canon G7X, which is a DSLR camera. So obviously the quality is going to be significantly higher with the DSLR and I want to start incorporating that into my feed, but I don't think it's the most important thing. So the choice is yours. If you have a nice camera you want to use, you can go ahead and use that, but your iPhone should work 
totally fine. Going along with that, if you're struggling to take pictures by yourself of yourself, I have a few little tips for you. So the first one is if you have a Canon that is Bluetooth, there is an app called Camera Connect and you can actually take the pictures from your phone to your camera. So you can use your phone kind of like a remote. It's actually the coolest thing ever. Technology is amazing and blows my mind. But if you don't have a camera and you do want to use your phone, you can of course set up a self timer and do a burst mode which will give you a ton of different options or if you have an Apple Watch you can actually use the watch as a remote to your phone as well. And of course if neither of those options work for you, you can always ask a family member or a friend to take some pictures for you. What I recommend is that you place them in the exact spot you want the photo to be taken and at that angle so all they have to do is press the button and you know that you will get the shot that you're looking for. Another little tip going along with all of that regarding taking the actual photo, the more options you have the better because you have more to work with. I will admit I myself can get a little bit picky when it comes to pictures and if I have two pictures to choose from and I don't like either of them then I'm kind of SOL. But if you take a ton of pictures, then you have more to work with, and I'm sure if you take 50, you will find at least one that you like. Another thing you can do to step up your Insta game is to brainstorm locations for a photo shoot or just taking pictures. So like I said before, the more variety, the better. So you don't want to take a bunch of different pictures in the same exact spot. So kind of plan out in your head what kind of vision you want and where you would like to take them. It just makes it easier for you in the long run. Now all that that planning and picture taking is done comes the fun part and the part that is most important to maintaining an aesthetic or a feed that is cohesive. And that is editing. There are tons of different apps you can use to edit, but what I have found the most effective for maintaining a cohesive feed is using Lightroom Mobile. I don't have the desktop version, but the mobile version works just as well. So whether you've taken the pictures on your phone or on your camera, you can transfer them to your phone and edit from here, export to Instagram, and you're ready to go. So quickly, I'm just gonna be showing you guys how to use Lightroom Mobile and how I apply the 123 presets to my photos and how you can make all your pictures look cohesive. Here is my photo and video folder. So we're just going to open Lightroom. I've already imported the pictures I wanna show you how I apply the preset to. So this is the first picture we are going to be editing. So if you scroll all the way over to the right, you're just going to click presets. I'm going to find my 123 presets folder. And here are all the options of filters that you can use. And they have even more on their website. So as you can see here, I have them organized. Beautiful, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, And we got Brain Airy, we've got California, Dark and Moody, Fitness, Instagram Style, LA, Miami, Minimal, Paris, Santorini, Springtime, and yeah. There, there's literally so many options. So yeah, so my favorite preset has actually been Instagram style one. So this is just what it looks like before even touching it, which already has made this photo look even better. Just here's a before and an after of applying it. So we're going to apply that. And then you just wanna go in and adjust anything you want to modify. So I don't want to do too much to this picture actually because it looks so good. Um, I'm just going to go into colors, click mix, and I'm going to click the orange and bring the saturation down just a little bit. And then I'm going to bring the luminance down as well. As far as the yellow go, which is the white background, I'm just going to bump it up to luminance plus 50. And that is all I want to do for this picture. This is just the before, and here is the after. I'm going to just crop it a little bit, and I'm going to export it. A little life hack for you, if you're editing a bunch of different pictures, you can copy the settings and paste them to your other pictures. Of course, you're going to have to adjust a little bit because not every single picture is the same, but it will save you a lot of time. 
So the next picture we're going to be editing is this one. I think it's cute. Um, I tried to do the Vogue challenge. So I'm just going to click the three dots at the top, press paste settings, and again, this picture already looks so good with the filter on it. I'm just going to take away the crop and then I'm just going to adjust slightly. And here is the second photo once it has its preset applied. So I'm going to save that. I'm just going to go through a few more times with a couple other pictures to show you. So I have just finished editing four pictures using the Instagram style one preset and I just put them in a folder to show you how cohesive they look. So here are the four pictures together. So here is the first one, the second, the third, and the fourth. So as you can see them all grouped together they all go really really well and the biggest difference this makes is that I really bumped up the yellow tones and desaturated them so it really makes the whites pop in all the pictures. The last thing I recommend is planning out your feed so if you do take a bunch of pictures at once or you know over a few days this is how you can ensure a really cohesive and aesthetically visually appealing feed. So what I use to plan out my pictures is Unum. So it's just a free app. You can buy more storage, but personally I don't need that much planning ahead. So the app is really easy. I'm sure you probably already have it, but it just connects your Instagram to the app. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on four open spaces and import those pictures so I can see how they will look. Um, three out of the four pictures I already have on my feed, but this is just to show you guys. You can play around with where you want them to be. And yeah, as you can see here, it does go really well with my feed. It does maintain that really bright and colorful and simple looking aesthetic. It doesn't look too over edited, I would say. I don't like it to look too overdone. Um, so for me, this looks perfect. But that is all for this video. I hope these tips and tricks were helpful and will, you know, in the long run really help you achieve the feed that you are trying to get. I will have the link to 123 presets in the description box if you are interested in checking it out. I highly recommend them and I think they will be an amazing game changer. There are also a lot of options per style of preset, so if one doesn't necessarily match a picture, then you can use another one and it'll still be cohesive. So definitely go check them out. They are affordable and they can make any picture look like a professional photo. If you guys did enjoy and you are not subscribed, please consider subscribing and helping me reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers by September. It would mean so much to me, you don't even know. And yeah, I love you all so much. Thank you again for watching and I will just see you in my next one. Bye guys.